Well, we begin, I suppose, on a note to remember somebody very special this week, Ireland and the world. We said farewell to a true and honest leader, an unrivaled musical innovator who for decades was a singular inspiration for generations of musicians all around the world. Uh, Paddy Maloney, founder member of the Chief. Yeah, you can, you can clap, Paddy. It's a <laughs> nice thing to do. Our yesterday, Gareva Annam, Paddy Maloney. And our thoughts tonight, they really are with Paddy's wife, Rita, and his children, Angus and Aideen and Podrick, and his daughter-in-laws, and Anne and Anya, and his sister, Sheila, and, of course, his grandchildren, whom he always spoke so proudly of. He was laid to rest today in a very beautiful service in Glendalock, and our sincere condolences are offered to his longtime friends in the Chieftains as they mourn together tonight after a very difficult day and remember their beloved Paddy uh, together. He, he was a regular on the show, as you probably know here, and he was somebody I would have met sometimes off-air. In fact, I met him once on a street in New York, in an airport in Boston, and in my local Super Value. Um, I know that sounds strange, but he shopped in the, same, in the same shop. And the point I'm making is that whether it was on a street in midtown Manhattan or in a shopping aisle in Dublin, you got a really good guy. A kind man, talented man, very beautiful man with a twinkle in his eye and a talent that will live on forever. So tonight we're going to be joined by John Sheehan and Finbar Fury, who are two of Paddy's oldest pals. We're going to chat about their friend. And we thought it would be fitting to mark his passing tonight with a remembrance of the man himself. And what we're going to do now, we're going to, we're going to show you a clip. And it's, it's a beautiful clip. It shows Paddy doing what he loved most, which was, of course, playing with the Chieftains. And... I believe that what you're about to see was one of his favourite things that he did. Here they are together on a Late Late Show appearance back in 1988. It's Paddy in his prime, doing what he loved best in a room full of friends. And as you're watching this, you'll spot some very well-known faces. So sit back and enjoy.
sick of Murray. Stop, we gaily on Ringo. Here for heel and toe for toe. Arm and arm and row and row. Oh, for Murray's wedding. Range of ruins are brighter as is any star. Friends love them all by far. Here's a darling Marley. Finbar Fury, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome both. Good to see you, fellas. Thanks for being here. You know, I, you both of you were looking at that misty-eyed. Oh, it was a wonderful clip, but wild abandon. Isn't Everything it? abandoned for the music and, and the <laughs> spirit of it all is just, just what Paddy was wonderful at. It was, it was going nowhere and everywhere yeah, at the same right. time. He was in love with it. You could see him. He was mad to go. You yeah. Know, and in the middle of it all and kind of orchestrating it effortlessly, yeah, yeah. The, the, the chaos. And then that's right, with a little link tune <laughs> in, in between and then everybody did whatever yeah. solo they wanted Wild. to do. Wild, wild. Van Morrison I saw there in I the middle of it. Yeah, Van. Van, yeah. Van, in the middle of it all. Do, do, does it make you sad to see Paddy now after the news this week, or do you feel... I was in shock. Were you? Yes, I was at a wedding up in Belfast, and I was, it was sort of hit and run in and out, you know? Sure. And uh, I heard the news when I got home. You know, couldn't believe it, you know? I was absolutely in shock, you know, because the last person I thought, you know, would be Paddy. You know, it's, it's just... It's like somebody that would be around forever, you know? Yes, yeah. I've I think... known Paddy since I was... 14 years old. Yeah. You know. So you were all lifelong friends for sure. And I think yeah. the last time you met him was on the Late Late Show Strange, was it? In, in London. That's right. When we yeah. did uh, the, the show with um, Moya Brennan. Yeah. And of course, and of course we had uh, Melda. Yeah. And uh, my wife Sheila was over there. Of course, she got involved. She was mother hen. They disappeared till five o'clock in the morning. Don't ask me where they went, you know. But we had a great time. It was a fantastic yeah. night. Keeping an eye on you no, and Melda, was she? Yeah. One, of the best things about, <laughs> one of the best things about that story, I brought over this shirt. Yes. I don't really remember. It was like one of these licorices with the white stripe down it. And it was blinding everybody on the camera. <laughs> and the BBC guy said, oh, can't you have a different shirt? And I didn't bring one with me. And the hotel was so far away. So Mick McCarthy was there, you know. Yeah. And uh, I said to Mick, uh, what time are you on? He says, 10 minutes after you. I says, give me your short. No. I did, yeah. This is true. <laughs> I said, give me your short. He said, no, I can't give you. I said, give me your short. So he gave me a short anyway, and I put the short on me, and there was cufflinks needed, so I had the World Cup cufflinks on me. <laughs> when I was doing the song with no. Amelda May, if you have a look at the game, you see the World Cups, time. and... And I gave him back the short and he went on with it then. <laughs> <laughs> You've swapped shirts after so well, I watched it in yeah, the sink and gave it back to him. Yeah. And did you, did you get to see Paddy after that show in, in that night? Yeah, we had a great night somewhere. because I remember when we went back to the hotel, there was a big queue at the bar, you know, at the hotel, you couldn't Shock, hear a drink yeah. and Paddy was... So me and Paddy sneaked next door to the other bar. Wise. We bought a bottle of wine and we got your man down Cork and we took two glasses. Yeah. We went back into the, our hotel and then we got into a corner and we just talked pipes all night, you know. Did you really? Yeah, and so, mm. so just the things, times we met on the road. And, Isn't that gorgeous? Because yeah. you would think that maybe after all the years, the last thing you want to talk about is pipes, but that just illustrates how important they were to him and are to you. It's a part of it, you know. I, I, I can't remember ever 
not being able to play yeah. pipes, you know, since I was it, a kid. It, it's know. funny, John. I remember being at an event um, in, in uh, the, the US Embassy, I think it was, and just at the end, somebody said, does anyone want to say anything? And Paddy was there, and everyone got a bit awkward, didn't they? Yeah. And he reached into his pocket, <clears throat> which he carried at all times, a whistle. He always had the tin whistle. Dead, and, and, and suddenly everyone relaxed. It was an extraordinary thing to... to a similar to, thing happened. I was up in uh, Arizona Oak yeah. with him one day, and it was a fairly polite gathering. Exactly. People were drinking cocktails and finger food and that kind of yeah. polite conversation. And Paddy, Paddy gives me a wink. He said, have you got the gadget in your pocket? The gadget. I have. So there was no announcement or anything else. The two of us lashed into a couple of reels. And the whole place took over. It was just the whole atmosphere, the whole atmosphere changed completely. And people were singing and dancing in a couple of, couple of hours. We were, were nearly thrown out of the place. <laughs> <we're staying. laughs> it changes everything. Though, yeah. It? yeah. Was, it, was it Brother McCaffrey was, was the, the man who... And Marino School, actually, yeah. the, Paddy and myself were schoolmates. We're in the same class in Marino School. Amazing. And uh, there was a wonderful brother there, uh, Brother McCaffrey. He had us for singing lessons and he taught us the tonic solfa, which Paddy took a great delight in demonstrating any time we met. Yes. He goes, So, me do, so, me, so, do, so, me, so, do, re, mi, re, do, ti, la, so, re, so, mi, so, fa, mi, re, do, ti, la, so, fa, and so on. <laughs> and um, people were mesmerized at this. I, 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 there was another occasion we were in the Gaiety Theatre yes. uh, and uh, we were doing a little spot together and, and we did a demonstration of the tonic sulphur. Yes. But for pure divilment, and I, I gave him no warning beforehand, I said, how about a um, little Beatles song, Hey Jude? I just threw it at him live on the stage and the two of us went into it. So me, me, so la, re, <laughs> re, me, fa, do, do, ti, so la, so for me. So la, 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 re, do, ti, do, la, so, do, re, mi, la, so, so for me, ti, ti, do. <laughs> like, oh, God. <laughs> well, okay. um, but um, it was a bit, bit of a challenge I threw him live on the stage. Yeah. You know. I, I wouldn't have done it only I knew he'd be well able for it. No trouble. He could trouble. mention any song and he'd lapse into the... What, what were the miscellaneous duets? Oh, God. I should take you back to Donny Carney. Do, yeah. Paddy came from Donny Carney. Barney McKenna came from the same place, just around the corner. And the two of them knew each other as teenagers. They used mm. to play together. So I was at a fesh Kjol competition one, one day, and uh, I did me fiddle bit, and I stayed on for what they called miscellaneous duets. Now, a miscellaneous duets could be concertina and a fiddle or flute and tin whistle or whatever it might be. Who comes on stage? Only Barney and Paddy. Banjo and Ilian Pipes. You couldn't get anything more miscellaneous. <laughs> in those days. The two of them did their spot anyway. They ran away with first prize. No, no problem. Yeah, and that, that's the thing about it. You say you could throw anything at him. Finbar, yeah. we talk about Paddy as a, an extraordinary player and a person, obviously, but an arranger too. He loved music, you know. The whole thing about Paddy, Paddy was in love with with all types of music, it didn't matter whether no it was barriers. Or it's, no, no barriers, no barriers, no walls, you know. Yeah. And, and he, he was a, wide a, open. An amazing um, ability to harmonise on a tune, just playing one tune, <coughs> one, the first run through, second run through, and Paddy would be flying away in heaven with harmonies, just spontaneous, you know. Yes. No, I don't think he ever studied the rules of harmony. He just, he just had it naturally, you know. Yeah, that's it. I, I think Ronan Collins was saying on the radio uh, yesterday or today, he was saying that, that uh, Paddy could name drop to beat the band, oh, but he yeah. could back it up because it could oh, be Paul yeah. McCartney, Stevie Wonder, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, they were yeah. all, he played with all the greats. He, he was global, properly global. Yeah, uh, absolutely. There was, there was no boundaries. You know, Mick and, Jagger and was tweeting about him yesterday as well. You know, oh, it's amazing. Right, yeah. Yeah. So that's the, we actually have a, a lovely message from Amy Lou Harris that okay. we'd like to share with people at home now, which she sent it in to, uh, reflecting on Paddy. Let's have a look at that. Mm -hmm. So just a few words in celebration of and in gratitude for the life of Patty Maloney. It was Patty and the Chieftains who first introduced me to those turbulent rhythms and heartbreakingly beautiful melodies of traditional Irish music. And, and really Patty almost single-handedly brought it to the world stage for, for everyone to hear. As a performer, an artist and musician, uh, his his passion and energy were something to behold. But I also found that he was a joy to be around in the studio and in the pub. Patty uh, is going to be sorely missed, but his legacy will endure for generations to come. What a gift he gave to all of us. And so 
Farewell, my friend. May the road you traveled so faithfully for so long rise up to meet you wherever you are. Thank you, Jamie Harris, for doing that for us. And for Paddy. Yeah, I was with uh, Paddy in Glasgow a couple of years ago. I was doing the spot for Declan O'Rourke. Yeah. And uh, Paddy had this little orchestra with him. And who did we end up playing with? Only Chris Christopherson. No. Yeah. Something I'd never imagined I, I would ever do. But with Paddy there, everything, everything was likely to happen, you know. He could duet with anyone, really. Yeah, he? yeah. And, uh, but there was a terrible joke years ago. <clears throat> Paddy did so many collaborations with different people. Do you remember the old jokes? Why did the chicken cross the yeah. road to get to the other side? Sure. Or there was very... So this one went, why did the chicken cross the road? To do a duet with Paddy Maloney. Because <laughs> he, he, he duetted with them all, though, yeah. didn't he? he was and, and the crossover was important for him, wasn't it? I mean, in terms of international music, international artists, different genres as well. That's right, and it just came naturally to him. And every, every collaboration was musically intact and, and, you know, very, very, very solid and very sound. But he was quite an astute businessman in a way as well, because I think these collaborations... <clears throat> introduced the groove to a, a much wider audience, you yes. know. Yeah, and generous to the next generation. Any time I was talking to people during the week, a great where, time. Yeah, the first time. time I met Paddy, I was 14 years of age. Sure. And I was actually on a train, and we were going to, I think it was the Boyle or Sligo, and we were going to a football match, sure. you know, and I was actually going busking it, you know, busking the football match, and I had the pipes with me. And I pulled open this door, you know, and Paddy was sitting there, and he brought me in. And uh, I think Rita might have been with him at the time, you know. I hope she was, anyway. And uh, he came in, he brought me in, and he was, it was a long time ago, you know, and uh, I had the pipes, and he got me playing, and I was, I said, he said, what are you doing? I said, we're going to the football match, we're going busking, you know. And uh, played a few tunes for Paddy, and he got, had a little whip around in the place, and he gave me a few bobs. Did he really? I told everybody it was a fiver. Yeah. And they fainted, you know. <laughs> I can see. Well, I think it was about five bob, to really, that, to tell that, the truth, you know. That, and that was my first meeting at Paddy, yeah. you know. And I, I think uh, I watched Kjell Tori Coolen come together, you know, with Sean O'Reilly. I think he had a great schooling with Sean O'Reilly as well, you know, because Sean O'Reilly was amazing, you know, at putting these arrangements together. Yeah. I remember going to see him. The first time I think he did a concert, I think it was in the Shelbourne Hotel, and my father brought me to see uh, and it was amazing they'd just been put together as a band yeah. and then Sean got sick and the band sort of disappeared I don't know what happened and then Paddy came back with the Chieftains you know and did a concert I think in the same hotel anyway we went to see the Chieftains for the first time with Martin Fay, Michael Tuberty who was playing flute there and yeah. I was blown away with the lads and Paddy just took over the whole like he was and he was a terrific arranger, yes. you know, and as I said, you know, from the school of Leo Rousam, you know, playing the pipes, you know, in Municipal School yes, of Music. Yeah. And you had Willie Clancy, who went to the Municipal School of Music as well. You had Liam Ogre Flynn, you had all these great pipers who came through. So Paddy would have been a part of uh, Sean Seary, mm -hmm. uh, there was Mick Tuhi, uh, Jim Dowling. And all of these were great pipers, you yeah. know, all taught by Leo, you know. And um, just to, be a, to watch it grow and grow and grow. And then Eddie and I, I remember when we left Ireland in 1967, we got a great break with the Corries, who uh, Roy Williamson had written Flower of Scotland. Yes. And he was best man at my wedding. Really? I think you, came, you were over there in your honeymoon. I was over at the in time. the honeymoon a few Yeah, we met you and you came along. And and bumped, into, <coughs> bumped into this fella. I thought we were on our own for a couple of weeks. <laughs> you can <laughs> never Edinburgh. escape. Bumped into this fella here. Sure, we had a party time. I'd say. It was great. Just, uh, <clears throat> uh, I remember the Chieftains uh, were playing in Glasgow University. Hmm. I was 22 at the time, 21 or 22. Eddie and I, Eddie would be a couple of years older, just the two of us on the road. And we'd made this sort of a bit of a name for ourselves because we toured Scotland with the Corries at the time, you know. And uh, we were living in Scotland at the time and uh, moved over. And we got this request, would you like to go on before the Chieftains in Glasgow right. University? And I said, ah, I haven't seen Paddy for years. I'd love to see him, you know. Yeah. And it was great to bump into so him. Back it was to the that second generosity time as well. I, I see you've come armed. You've come armed. 
Yeah, I brought a few flutes because you don't know where this fellow's going to go. You know, you could go down the nice road or go to the other <laughs> side. You know, but, um, you me? It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you me? Could, yeah, it might you. take off in different directions. You know. What are you going to do? Uh, what are you going to play? Well, we tried to we tried to tune when the girls were doing the makeup. Yeah. Or trying to do the makeup. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that, girls. We, uh, yeah. Do you want to introduce her first? You would just. Should we try that. It's yeah, so air lament and memory of Paddy. Erring Ninos in Kehi. For Ireland, I would not tell her name, but a very old lament. Beautiful choice. Will we try that? You go for it. Totally unrehearsed. Understood. The way it should be. Correct. So far. That was really beautiful. I think I think we could we continue not to rehearse. No, no. I, to be serious for a moment, that, that was very moving. I, you know, I I got the sense listening to that music that you were saying goodbye to a fallen comrade yeah. in the field. Yeah, yeah. Does that absolutely. make sense? Ab it, absolutely. It yeah. seems like if for for you two, so so esteemed musicians and and people, you know people in Ireland to, to play so beautifully and movingly. It was like your way of saying goodbye. Yeah, to totally un unarranged and un unreal. Well, we have a call. I was I thinking know. of that feeling today, that it's something to describe Paddy gone from us. I was thinking of a, not just a star, but a supernova yeah. after burning out and we're left here in the shadows lingering and, and thinking of him on, on, you know. Yeah, it's it's the last time we met him, of course, was over. And we had a great chat about him. He had a fat og in his pocket, you yes. know, and I had a, I always carried the whistle with me anyway in the banjo, you know, in the banjo case. And yes. we had the two tin whistles in the corner and we played a few tunes and he was great, you know. I never saw him in better form, you know. We had a great night together. That, that was very, very beautiful. And, and yeah, I, I know you. we have another contribution um, that came to us from Mr. Michael Flatley. Oh, okay. uh, who wanted to say a few words. So a great flute player, Michael. And, uh, precisely. I, people forget that in the yeah. middle of all the dancing, right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Let's hear from Michael. Hi, this is Michael Flatley. I was very sad to hear of the passing of Paddy Maloney. Nobody has done more to promote Irish music and culture globally than Paddy Maloney. There should be a monument to that man in Ireland someplace. He gave me my start in the business, which I'll always be eternally grateful for. I had the honor of performing with Paddy and the Chieftains on and off for many years. And let me tell you, they are the greatest band in the world. We're going to miss you, Paddy. God rest your soul. Thanks to Michael for doing that. Okay. 
I just want to thank you both for being here tonight. Appreciate it. Thanks, and uh, for offering that piece of music. I don't think I'll ever forget that piece of music. It was really very beautiful. Thank, thank you both you. for being here. Ladies and gentlemen, no. John and Finbar. Thank you both. Yeah. John and Shane Finbar, too. Lovely fellas. Okay, and we're going to leave you both, and leave everyone with the, uh, the voice and the music of your friend and ours, Paddy Maloney. I just wasn't happy to sit down and just play real jigs and arm pipes for the rest of my life. I wanted to move out as well, you know. The first one tonight from the Chieftains. Would you welcome, please, the Chieftains. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chieftains. just been an unbelievable musical journey that um, it's my dream come true. Paddy Maloney, founder member of the 